We're going to add in the garage door. Now I'm going to show you the, the way that I like adding in doors and windows, which is different to the way that I've been taught uh, by Archicad or Graphisoft. Um, window tool or door tool, I'm going to put in the garage door in this instance. So I'm going to go straight to the door tool. Garage door, which type do I want? I'm going to make this a bit bigger, it's a bit hard to see. So I just want a simple door. I'm going to use the vertical sliding door. It, it could be a tilt garage door as well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, overhead garage door. I think in this instance it's actually a tilt door, so I'll use that one. And before I put it in, before I place it, sometimes I place and then change the size. In this instance I'm going to do it the other way around. So I'm going to make it 4530. Yeah, and now I could do this two different ways. I could place this center because I know it's in the middle of this wall. Click, click. I could do it that way. That would be the best way. I'll just show you one more option as well. If I wasn't sure where it was or I knew it was in this instance three, four, five off this wall, what I would do is actually place it on that corner and then I would move it. Right click, move, drag. R345. So I know that's not the technical way, the way that other people explain it. And we see straight away we have a bit of an issue with the way that this size has been done. Um, so what does that tell me? That number there, 4530, is not the number that we're after because it should be 4530 minus 345 because it's running dimensions. So it's always good to check so you ensure that you don't end up with a, a number that's the wrong way around. 4530 minus 345 equals 4185. Once we've done that, let's now check it to see that that's correct. And we should find that this one is still 345 and the other length is 345. So now we've confirmed that that's the correct measurement and the correct way of doing it. For these walls, holding shift to select multiples, I know that these walls aren't as high as the other ones necessarily. I'm going to group those together as well. I know that these are 140, and I know that these walls are slightly different. This is a 110 brick wall with engaged piers, but for now I'll just make it 110. And I know that these walls are slightly shorter, so I'm going to set this up with a maximum height of, let's just make it minus, oh, uh, minus 200 for now. I know that because there's a, a slab, a veranda slab over the top of this. So when I go up to my upper ground floor, I can now right click on my lower ground floor, show trace reference, and I can apply a slab over this shape. So if I magic one on the outside of this wall, it doesn't identify it necessarily with what I'm trying to achieve. There we go. Click. And it's only clicked the wall itself, not the shape. So instead I'm going to draw this manually. How on earth did that happen? I know why. Because I changed the wall thickness. That's fine. Let's go down and fix this. We need to offset this 30 millimeters. Let's click on the face. Uh, offset R30. All the other way around. Uh, we'll move this. to align these. Great. I'll go back up. And now I'll trace this with the slab. I'm going to use the polygonal method. And I'm going to change this to just a 100 mil slab for now. This will be concrete. I'm not too worried about the settings. I can change that later. And I'm going to click around the corners.
I wouldn't shift in this instance. And close it. Now I could turn on a bit of a cover fill if I wanted to, just to make that more identifiable. I'll just use 25 mil for now. Great. So we've got a fill or a cover fill over our slab. I haven't yet drawn the slab for the inside. We have a roof, but not a slab. Let's pick up the same settings as this. I think I left one setting out. I need to set that at minus 100. So let's now take the same settings. This isn't true. Uh, I know this is a composite timber floor. But for now, let's make it 150. And we'll just make that asphalt for now to keep it simple. And we want this one to be set at zero. OK. And now, because I have a roof, I can magic wand this shape. Tab to toggle through the things I've selected. And we see that's automatically applied to the outside face. So with the wall, sometimes it's hard to magic wand because it doesn't necessarily know what we're trying to do. But if we've got more of a, a polygonal shape, in this case the roof, we can use that as the magic wand area. So now we have all of the elements of the base part of our building modeled. Let's go into the settings, show all in 3D. So our roof is too high, but our Lower ground floor is sitting basically at ground level, which is great. It's popping out of the ground here just like it should be. And at the rear, it's out of the ground a little bit like it should be. And it's quite a lot out of the ground here like it should be. So that's that's pretty good. We see that we've duplicated this roof. We've got one roof that is down here, one roof that is up here. This roof is actually wrong, but this roof needs some work done to it. If I'm not sure, sometimes it's hard to know what story that's in. If I click on the roof, go into the settings, <clears throat> we can see that's located on the first floor. If I click on this roof, we see that this is on the first floor as well. So while I'm here, I'll delete this one. And then when I go to first floor, I can make the changes necessary here. Uh, what, what I did last time, let's just turn the trace reference on so that makes sense, is I offset all edges. Let's make that 1500 this time. I did the other way around. Uh, actually, yeah, sorry, we'll do that one more time. Offset all edges. I've got the polygon on the roof. Offset all edges, 1500. And now we're going to reduce just one at a time on the side down to zero. The other one down to zero. So we only want to have eaves at the front and the back, not on the sides for this existing roof. Not that that's what we'd actually want. So later on, once we've looked at a design, for this, we'll look at how we might change this to make it work a bit better. We're on the first floor. We can change the roof settings. We don't want it to be dashed. We'd like that to be solid. We've got a polyline here showing the, the size, the location of the floor underneath. That's great. That's what we want to do. And if we wanted to, we could go back into the settings of the roof and turn a cover fill back on so we can represent that. Now, what we had that on previously, I think was called uh, plank form maybe, but we'll change that to weatherboard. And we'll change its orientation by clicking here. Great. 